Anime has long been in the business of fulfilling fantasies, and depending on how you feel about fantasies of the portal variety, 2021 is either a dream come true or an absolute nightmare. Over 20 different isekai were slated for this year, most of which are already here, including the cinematic event of the century, Space Jam 2. But it's also been a banner year for a different kind of fantasy that scratches many of the same itches in a slightly different fashion time travel anime. And while there haven't been even half as many of those as Isekai this year, all the ones we have gotten have been absolute bangers and redo of Healer. Although, depending on your definition of bang... Wait, Jeff, stop! I'm you from the future! If you make that joke now, the whole video will be demonetized. Oh shit! Shoot! You're right! Thanks for warning me. Anything else I should know? Actually, yeah. If you keep going with this intro, there will be no clean way to segue into today's sponsor, G Fuel Energy Formula, which also happens to be how I time traveled. Wow, that is crazy. Care to elaborate? No! Look, the only thing that matters is letting the fine folks at home know that G Fuel Energy Formula comes in a wide variety of sugar-free flavors, including Sanic Chili Dogs for some reason, but also normal ones like Cherry Limeade, Yuzu Splash, the Tropical Tasting Scarlet Nexus Brain Blast, and Peach Rings for Sonic fans who are cowards, like me. And many of those are also available in caffeine-free hydration packets. And hey, don't forget to tell them that if they use the promo code BASEMENT at checkout, they can get 30% off a G Fuel order of any size. Yeah! Wait, no! The big regret that made me travel back in time in the first place is I never got to see the promo code! You just created a paradox that'll... Uh, uh, yeah! Let's talk about anime now, and save what just happened for... never. There are nearly as many different approaches to animating time travel as there are anime about it, but by and large, all of the series and movies on the subject can be divided into four broad categories. Time lines, time loops, time leaps, and time to argue about whether this last one counts as isekai. Borderline isekai for short. I probably should have just gone with that, but I really wanted to make them all fit that naming convention. Sorry. Some of you may also be confused by timelines, short for parallel timelines, so let's start by expanding on that one. I'm referring specifically to the quantum physics concept that every time some variable in our world could potentially result in multiple different outcomes, all of them happen at once, creating parallel realities that split off from the same point on the timeline. This concept has been used as the basis for some pretty wild scenarios, like Noane's pan-dimensional war between two possible future Earths, which can only be resolved by two modern-day middle schoolers for complicated reasons. In general, though, anime that draw on science or pseudoscience like this tend to be a bit more grounded, at least at first, limiting the scope of their dimension hopping and time travel in interesting, story-complicating ways. Steins Gate, with its microwave that sends text messages back in time, and also organic matter if you're okay with it coming out the other end a little more gelatinous, is the archetypal example. Its conceit really only allows for one small thing in the past to be changed at a time, but by targeting the right event, it can cascade out in a butterfly ripple that changes who people are and even how the entire world around them works. You don't need me to tell you that Steins Gate is essential time travel anime, though, and you don't need me to spoil anything that happens in it either. Most other series in this category tend to follow its lead, with different restrictions on how much data can make the jump. In Orange, for instance, the heroine, Naho, sends an entire letter back to her teenage self in an effort to prevent the death of the boy that she's about to fall in love with. It plays quite deftly with those what-if feelings we all have about our high school experiences and the tragedies of our past, digging into how much regret can shape our lives for better and for worse, and asking tough questions about how much one choice or one friend can really do to alter someone's fate. It's a bit of a heavy watch, or read, 
the manga is one of Yazzie's absolute favorites, and as she helped me discover, the anime doesn't really do it justice. But no matter how you experience it, it will give you a lot to think about and even more to cry about. Of course, limiting the future information that characters have access to doesn't always lead to grounded human storytelling. Mirai Nikki Future Diary is also about people reading their future phone messages and altering their actions accordingly, and it's, well, it's Mirai fucking Nikki. Zero Chill the Animation. A real roller coaster of a show, but a rickety one with low hanging supports that are liable to rip your head off if you're not careful. Far better constructed is the anime roller coaster that opened up this spring, Vivi Fluoride Eyes Song, which technically follows the rule that only data can be sent across timelines, but fudges it somewhat by making that data an entire hyper advanced AI sent back to stop all the other AI from doing a Terminator 100 years in the future. To accomplish to accomplish this, Matsumoto must team up with a robot idol named Diva, Vivi to her friends, who is the first of her kind to be given full autonomy and has been tasked by her creators to use it to make everyone happy with her singing. Which is a bit of a far cry from altering the century-long chain of robot-related disasters and terrorist attacks that create the conditions for the great AI genocide, but as Matsumoto points out, Everyone can't be happy if everyone is dead. And while Vivi isn't built for combat, the nice thing about being a robot is you can just download Kung Fu. Vivi does a lot of really cool high concept sci-fi stuff with its premise, delivering many of the year's coolest action scenes, but at its heart it's really a story about the heart. What exactly the heart is and what singing your heart out really means. Across a hundred years, Vivi will struggle with those questions and find answers in the very action-packed experiences she thought would distract her from them. And ultimately, well, I'll leave you to see and hear that for yourself in its achingly beautiful finale. As I said when I first discussed it in the spring seasonal, it's no surprise that Vivi turned out as great as it did, or that its timeline is as thoughtfully constructed as it is, given that its writer, Tape Nagatsuki, has quite a bit of experience writing time travel, albeit of a different sort. Thankfully, that sort is a lot more self-explanatory. In a time loop, a character or characters is forced, or sometimes chooses, to repeat the same events over and over, with the only variation coming from their own choices, and occasionally not even then. The progressive time loops of Tape Nagatsuki's ReZero, which see its hero repeatedly throwing his own corpse up against the scariest threats its dark fantasy world can muster, looking for the one slim path through all the chaos and onto the next, even more horrifying challenge, have made it one of the most iconic isekai out there. Though, funny enough, that defining feature was missing entirely from the half-season that aired this year, as all the hard-earned growth that Subaru underwent in 2020 thoroughly prepared him to take on all the threats facing the Sanctuary in one go. And while watching that big plan come together over the course of 12 episodes would have been satisfying enough on its own, after 36 episodes characterized by the same trademark stop-and-start story rhythm, it feels positively triumphant in in a way that only this show could pull off. I've already spent several hours raving about the many qualities of ReZero though, so let's not dwell too long. Time loops don't have to be painful though, even the apocalyptic ones. In Punchline's case, for instance, our ghostly hero Yuta never actually sees the bloody end of the world that he's fighting to prevent, on account of how just glimpsing a different kind of end, specifically one with its own punchy line, sends him into a super-powered nosebleed coma that lasts until reset. It's a quirk quirky little action comedy with a psychic, a superhero, and a shut-in super genius all living together in one tiny dorm that hides, somewhere within its walls, the key to preventing Armageddon, and also a lot of potentially disastrous panty shot angles. Don't underestimate it on account of that, though. This show was written by Zero Escape and I the Somnium Files genius creator Kotaro Uchikoshi, so rest assured that both the time travel logic and the underlying mystery are super solid and very rewarding for viewers who like to keep their eyes peeled for small details. With a few exceptions, like Masaaki Yuasa's Tatami Galaxy, which condenses three years of college regret into every single episode, 
episode, time loops tend to run short, focusing on a few meticulously crafted days, as we see in The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, a massively influential sci-fi novel from 1967 that was adapted into a brilliant anime movie by Mamoru Hosoda in 2006. In it, a teenage girl named Makoto stumbles, literally, onto a mysterious high-tech walnut that grants her the power to travel back in time by physically jumping from high places, which she instantly begins abusing to improve her grades, prevent herself from ever being embarrassed, and generally enjoy her youth to its fullest. This, of course, has profound unintended consequences for everyone around her. She is fucking with one of the underlying principles of reality, after all, that lead to her learning a very important lesson about what really matters and how to take charge of her own future. Powerful stuff, if a bit cliched, but you can get away with that when you invented the cliches. Almost every series I've talked about so far is influenced by that original novel in some way, particularly the way it uses its time loop to explore the inner world of a specific character. The Girl Who Leapt Through Time also, perhaps unsurprisingly, helped to establish the concept of time leaps, which I define as a character traveling through the span of a single human lifetime, usually to undo some past mistake or regret. Though there are outliers, like Hirozuku World in Color, where the heroine or hero's goal is to recover something from the past that can't be found in their present, generally while trying their best not to affect too many butterflies or get themselves Marty McFlyed. Zipang is a fascinating example of this. It follows the crew of a modern Japanese battleship, the JDS Mirai, which, as it's crossing the Pacific for a training exercise with the US Navy, slips back through time 60 years, just in time to catch the start of the Battle of Midway. The patriotic crew is tempted to use their modern weapons to intervene and defend their homeland, but of course that homeland is, at present, the heart of an expanding fascist empire ruled by uncaring monsters whose defeat will directly lead to the creation of the peaceful, prosperous nation they actually call home. Realizing this, Mirai's crew resolves to find a way back to the future without changing the past, though obviously that's a lot easier said than done. The same conundrum on a smaller scale is faced multiple times by the stars of Link Click, a Chinese Billy Billy original donghua that was simulcast this spring on Funimation about a pair of apparent entrepreneurs, Cheng and Liu, whose Time Photo Studio is actually a front for… it's kinda hard to explain. Basically, Liu is able to see 12 hours into the future from any photo that he lays his eyes on, while Cheng can jump into the body of whoever took it for 12 hours. Using these abilities and their trans-temporal telepathic link, the pair do everything from odd jobs to corporate espionage, trying their best at all times to avoid changing the past. Which is already a compelling enough concept, but then episode 1 hits you with, uh, let's just call it a whammy, because I really don't want to spoil nothing in this show. Link Click is a hidden gem among hidden gems that I myself passed over during my sweep of spring anime, but if I'd seen it at the time, it almost certainly would have pushed something off my spring list. Maybe even the next show I'm about to discuss. Tokyo Revengers is an exceptionally good manga that's been turned into an exceptionally okay anime. In my opinion, the music and voice acting are about the only good parts of its production. But that manga's story about a wannabe tween delinquent turned 20-something wage slave who must travel back to his traumatic past and become the badass he never was to save the only woman he's ever loved from being murdered in the present by the street gang that once made him their bitch is more than compelling enough to make up for any of its many animation shortcomings. It's easily one of the year's biggest hits, and with good reason. Tokyo Revengers combines the escapist appeal and character-building potential of Erased's time-leaping murder mystery concept with the by-and-large forgotten fun of a good old-fashioned delinquent manga. A genre about passionate young men claiming the freedom society denies them using only their own strength. Like the best delinquent tales of years past, it shines a light on both the dark side of that violent lifestyle and the genuine strength of character that it takes to live in that world without losing oneself. 
It also gets complicated and fast in the best possible way, as Takemichi's investigations into the past gradually reveal a sprawling web of characters, relationships, and conspiracies, which he must untangle if he's ever gonna set things right with Tachibana Hinata in the present. Clocking in at 21 Tankoban volumes and counting, this manga's scope is a lot wider than your typical time-traveling tale, and the writing is genuinely smart enough to make that length work. If you're looking for something on the chiller side, this season's Remake Our Life offers a lot more escapism and a lot less violence, with a lot better animation, in its tale of a failed 28-year-old game developer who's found that his sensibly chosen economics degree just isn't cutting it in the creative world. The night after he's laid off, he drifts off to sleep, wishing that he'd taken a chance on an ultra-competitive art college instead of boring old university, and awakens ten years earlier with the opportunity at hand to do just that. I just talked this one up in the summer ones to watch, and not much has changed since then besides the show hitting a very nice beach episode, so go watch that if you want to hear more about it. Remake Our Life is one of the more adult time travel series out there, in more ways than one, but above all else, it's really fun, offering a laid-back escape not unlike what you'd get from a chill, high-quality isekai. Though, as I said at the top, time travel can get closer to that experience. Series like Dr. Stone and Inuyasha send their heroes and or heroines so far through time in one direction or another that they may as well be in a different world entirely. In Dr. Stone's case, one could make the case that the Stone world still operates on the same rules as our own and contains all the same people, just frozen in rock, thus not isekai, but Inuyasha's vision of feudal Japan is so permeated with strange magics and ancient, powerful demons and so light on actual history that it's basically just a Sengoku Jidai-inspired fantasy world, especially when you put it next to the relatively normal modern era that Kagome calls calls home. Inuyasha is definitely in a different class from the more down-to-earth Nobunaga Concerto and all the other anime about modern people meeting Oda Nobunaga, and from the far less down-to-earth Batman Ninja, whose Joker-dominated Sengoku era is pretty goddamn ridiculous, honestly, but no more so than what Bruce is used to back in Gotham. Basically, it's just an excuse to add some samurai spice to the caped crusader's bread-and-butter bad guy fighting, which is awesome! Especially as it was animated by Kamikaze Doga, the same studio that did the first four JoJo openings. It's pretty clear that's not isekai, but it's tricky to know exactly where to draw that line. Part of what makes Isekai Isekai is the pronounced difference between the New World and the hero's origin point, which is obviously relative. So, like, do I count the cult anime Laws of the Universe Part 1 because its ordinary teen heroes go meet dinosaurs and fight bug aliens? Or do I discount it because their ordinary world is based on the very wacky worldview of the actual, literal cult that financed the movie as propaganda? I'll probably have to dive into that and their other stuff in another video. There's also the question of reverse isekai time travel scenarios like that of Jibiate, which I've already spent more than enough time roasting. It's not the only time travel anime that brings cool historical figures together for a big world shake and fight, though. We certainly can't ignore the Fate franchise, where wizards summon ancient heroic spirits with reality-breaking magical abilities, but also th the popular fictional accounts of those heroes directly impact the nature of their abilities and personalities, so there's sort of a blend of real historical figures and the mythology that spawned from them. Plus, while Fate's modern day is quite magical, already, the Babylonia we visit in Fate Grand Order is so much more magical than that that it really feels like a different place entirely, and maybe trying to make sense of Fate lore in one short section of a video on a different topic is a bad idea. Let's cut that off there. The question of where the world line lies between time travel and isekai is also probably a bit too big for this one section, but hopefully I've at least given you something interesting to think about until I can attack that question in earnest. For now, though, just let me know in the comments below what you think of the isekai time travel dilemma, and I'll try to include some of your arguments in that when it happens. There is one more way anime can use time travel as a plot twist, but 
Obviously, naming any examples of that would spoil them for you, so I'm just taking this moment to note that they do exist. Oh, and lastly, while I'm not sure if it counts, I'm sure someone will be mad if I don't mention that Gainax's landmark OVA Gunbuster features one of the best depictions of time dilation in all of science fiction. So go watch that too if you're a nerd, which you probably are if you made it this far into this video. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement. <laughs>